Is there a risk that we do uh, destroy incentives? So um, you know, straightforward, yes. Um, I think you know, even with all of the negative things I say about capitalism, you know, I can see cap things have done pretty well under capitalism for quite a long time. Um, I'm not sure how long or how many of those things are directly attributable to capitalism, though. You know, maybe if we had a you know libertarian socialist society, we would, still would have developed a lot of great things. Um, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more. Who knows? Um, it's possible that the the capitalist structures, like you say, you know, it does incentivize things because you've got a lot more competition happening um, directly um, it, at a kind of a grander scale. Um, but also, like you said, you know, it incentivizes bullshit as well. It incentivizes people to, you know, um, in Germany, you know, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent here. Do but, it, man. Um, you know, uh, in Germany, um, if you go to your local pharmacy and, you know, say, I need something for a headache, there's a very good chance they're going to give you homeopathic sugar pills, which do literally nothing for your headache. What? Why? Why do they just give you Nurofen? Because the sugar pill manufacturer um, is allowed to sell it as if it's medicine, um, and they've like there's no there's nothing there's nothing stopping them doing that, and the pharmacy will make more money off it because they can put a bigger markup on it. So you know, you actually if you want something that actually works, you walk in and you ask for the thing that you want. Okay, but in yeah. a libertarian. <laughs> Uh, socialist society with maximum liberty, they could still sell products like that. Yes, but they don't have as many incentives to anymore. Basically, the the incentive structure that the incentive structure that causes that sort of thing to happen is largely disappearing because you no longer have this uh, you know strong um, motivation to make more money off the money that you have. You instead have uh, motivation to make money off productive, useful work. Why? Um, Making money off money is essentially what capitalism allows. Um, just trying to think how to work. Yeah, but, this if, best, if, but uh, in the end, you still want to make money yeah. because if you have the more money, you have the things you can do. So, yeah. like, yeah, you might want a bigger house. You might want to have two holidays a year. Mm -hmm. You might want to drive a nice car. You yep. might want to have a helicopter. You might want to have a yacht. Like, there's there's always new targets. Yeah. Those targets will still exist. You still Absolutely. have markets. So I still will have an incentive to be successful yep. and I might realize, hey, I can make more money selling these sugar pills and manufacturing this. Yeah, and I, I think some people absolutely would try and some people might even be re reasonably successful at it. But I think um, the you are more likely to be successful at selling something which people actually want to buy again. Um, so you know, if somebody has a headache, they are more likely to buy Nurofen mm -hmm. than they are to buy sugar pills once they have tried both. Um, <laughs> But isn't that going to happen in a capitalist society? <sighs> to an extent, perhaps, yes. Um, but I think less so because in the capitalist society, you've got these um, structures that allow people to be producing more unproductive bullshit, basically. I mean, I think but, that, yeah. that is certainly true. I'm just not sure it works on, uh, with your sugar yeah. pill analogy. Perhaps but, my analogy wasn't the best yeah. one, but yeah. No. After saying, let's not get caught up in the analogy, I'm mm -hmm. totally caught up in the analogy. Me too. Okay. Um, <laughs> What I struggle to get my head around is even if you, if in this world you can't sell what Bitcoin did as a business, are you not just choosing to like ignore value? Because those subscribers, unless I'm thinking of this completely wrong, they are valuable. And so you can ignore it, but it's still there. So they are valuable, but you would basically be choosing to either walk away from them or not walk away from them. In the same way that if I um, sell fruit on the corner, I have regular customers. The fact that they trust me to sell them nice fruit, mm -hmm. it, it has value. Um, but if I choose to stop selling fruit, then that's my choice and that basically just disappears. But that seems like an inefficiency. So if you wanted to buy the podcast, yep. that's a that's a... You know, I don't know, a five year head start as opposed to starting fresh with that, just with our cameras if you just buy the physical things. Mm -hmm. So, how, how can you, like, how do you square that when something is valuable, you're just choosing to not take it? Um, does it take a, yeah, a mind shift I'm, for everyone? Uh, it, it does take a mind shift for everyone. Yeah. It, it takes um, enough people agreeing that that is the way that society works. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, that's why it's best done as a slow approach by just finding and identifying the inefficiencies first. Um, and really aiming for, you know, um, or the the unnecessary hierarchies first. So find those, eliminate them, and see how society builds. Again, this is one of those questions which is more towards the you know 
perfect utopian society in the future, which I deliberately don't try to imagine. Mm -hmm. So you know, exactly what that would look like, I don't know. And I don't have a good answer to the question, you know, what about the value of the subscribers? I think it's possibly an inefficiency which is worth it. Right. I think perhaps maybe one of the issues with some of the ideas is I think they ignore human nature. And I think we have like an innate human nature to organize, lead. We have people who want to lead, who desire to lead. Mm -hmm. We also have people who actually, some people don't want to lead. They want to work. Look, I've run companies. Yep. And within the companies, you you have a structure. You have a CEO, you have a board, you have management teams. And you have some people who want to sit on a board table and be at board meetings. The other people, they just, I just want to turn up and just tell me what the fuck to do and just pay me. Um, I'm sure everyone wants to have part of the business, but everyone wants more of the business. Yeah. Um, and you, when you say we, you have to have enough people who want this, maybe there just never will be enough people who want this. Possibly not, but actually I would also, I would push back a little bit on it being innate human nature, and I would say it's the nature of people who have grown up in that system. If you go back a thousand years and you look at the feudal societies of Europe, you know, I don't think you had a lot of people who, um, you know, amongst the the plebs who really wanted to be, um, you know, uh, running a corporate structure. And if you talk to them All about right, the, you I, don't think the serfs wanted to be the lords. If you, you talk, uh, yes, but that's a different thing. That's one. That's not wanting to be. Um, that that's not wanting to be running a corporation. That's wanting to be. Uh, in a better status in life. And I think everyone wants to be in a better status in life, regardless, like you were saying before, you know, there's always the next thing, the nice car, the helicopter, whatever. Um, and that's why I'm an advocate of free markets still. I don't say get rid of markets. I don't say get rid of money. I think communism is this utopian ideal because of that. You know, you can't do that. Um, that goes against human nature. But um, identifying the um, unnecessary hierarchies and getting rid of those, uh, I think works Better and yet, what I'm saying about the feudal societies, you know, they didn't have an idea of corporations, the idea of a company. It was just people coming together and doing things. Um, you know, a, a butcher shop back then, or a goldsmith, or whatever. They were people applying themselves to do a trade, and if they stopped doing that trade, then things like you know the trust relationship they had with their customers is gone. In the same way we were talking about subscribers before. Um, so you know. We haven't always lived in a capitalist society, and I think capitalism is not um, inevitable and not necessarily human nature. It's just something that we have gotten used to. But perhaps that's just part of evolution. Yeah, we evolved to. Yeah, we sorry, we evolved away from feudalism. Now we we have this new societal structure. We do have. Uh, new laws and reg you know it's yep. one of the things that's come out of that is we have regulations so back then if you were a i don't know a castle builder you would just build the castle sure. but now you a house builder you build the house but there's certain regulations certain things you have to do to so you ensure you don't build structures that uh that crumble you know certain buildings that have to be able to survive certain weather conditions um you know if, have we not involved to do things for the betterment of society and yes there are weaknesses in there. Yes, there's inefficiencies yep. in there. Yes, there's things that we can complain about. But but you can criticize every single structure. But are, are we not coming to a natural... Uh, are we not evolving naturally to where we should be? I don't it's, know would be a very good answer to that. Um, it's possible that human, humanity will, evolves towards capitalism and then stays there. But I think it would be naive to say... We but, know but capitalism, that sure. sorry, I'm, yep. I'm going to interrupt. People hate it when I interrupt. I apologize. Okay. So I just want to get this point because it's like capitalism is essentially the accumulation of stuff. Capitalism is the con is the ability to control society by the accumulation of stuff. I think I don't see it as that. I think capitalism is the accum accumulation of stuff. I think a, a fair observation is that it leads to the ability to control parts of society. But in under, feud under feudalism, there was control. Oh, absolutely. It was a much more direct and dictatorial control, much yeah. more authoritarian, absolutely. So we've actually got less authoritarian in a capitalist society, but I, I see it as the accumulation of stuff, but isn't that just like an innate, uh, evolved part of biology that you know, we need, you know, go back, you look at any animals or go back, they need food. Always the, the one thing you need every day is uh, mm -hmm. uh, the hierarchy in these, uh, yeah. Maslow's hierarchy in these, one of them is food. It is. And so, you know, we evolved to, you know, we used to be scavengers and, 
you know, hunter gatherers, and then we learned about about farming, and so we created farms, and then we would, you know, be able to hold product and 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 you know the yield from the farm and store it, and then have to protect that. But it's a, the accumulation. Uh, we've just we're just accumulating crazy now because we want different stuff. Sure, sure. I I don't disagree with any of that, um, except that. Uh, when we're talking about the accumulation of stuff, you know, I, I also, like I said, I have no problem with that. Um, you know, I think that's a natural thing in a market and you will naturally, you know, humans want stuff. We want a better life. We want to be happier. Um, so, and stuff generally makes us happy. Um, or we hope like hats. Does. We hope stuff makes us happy, maybe. Hats make me happy. Hats are good, yeah. yeah. I spent far too much on this one, but uh, yeah. Oh, now I want to know. You can't say that. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about it later. We'll yeah. talk about that later. <laughs> All right. Did you price in in sats? No, I've had this one for much longer. Yeah. So I bought a hat off Jimmy Song once in sats. And it's on the table out here. Is it, is it on the table? Uh-huh. I can't wear it because it depresses me because <laughs> I actually know how much I paid in a in an auction. I know, now know what it cost me that is probably the most expensive cowboy hat in the world. Which is why, actually, to get back to what I was saying, right at the start, um, you know, um, the opportunity cost of spending Bitcoin is the same as the opportunity cost of spending fiat that you could have exchanged for Bitcoin but didn't. Don't think of it as an expensive hat. Think of all of the pounds that you had sitting around that you didn't exchange for Bitcoin at that point in time. Huh. That makes it even worse. That's, no, that's a real click because I think... Ha, ah, that's yeah. a light bulb moment. Danny, okay. we're going to need some more Bitcoin, man. <laughs> no, that's right. You're right. You're, you're fucking right. Yeah. <laughs> So Sahil so explained it, you explained it earlier, but that's the first time I've like, it's probably clicked. When I compare it to all the stuff I've bought in Bitcoin and I'm like, shit, why did I pay in Bitcoin? But if I did just put all my fiat in. Yeah. <sighs> and the, it's the exact same thing. If you bought that hat with fiat, that was fiat you could have exchanged for Bitcoin, but didn't because you preferred the hat. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with buying a hat if you want a hat. But, you know. Um, you think about the value of that hat and what it potentially could be in the future. Maybe you want it, maybe you don't. That's your choice. Ah, right. Yeah. You can't mm-hmm. use that to take me away from where we were, though. Yeah, okay. Right. So <laughs> where were we? Rules, not rulers. Yes. How do you establish rules without rulers? Yeah. And how do you enforce rules without rulers? So, yeah, that's, you know, I love that quote, rules without rulers. That is, you know, the kind of classic anarchist thing along with no gods, no masters. Um, but how do you establish rules? Essentially by agreement, and agreements can get very complex. They can be between individuals, they can be between groups of people, they can be between large groups of people who agreed that somebody else should temporarily represent them in order to make an agreement at an even larger scale. And this is where you get into an interesting question, and I know there's a lot of people who would strongly disagree with me here. I think the US founding fathers were essentially libertarian socialists, I think they were anarchists and what they were attempting to do with federalism was really to establish a more um, fair kind of society where smaller groups of people are making agreements between each other. The states just got too large and too unwieldy over time. I don't disagree. I don't completely disagree with you. I I mean, I would have to go and spend a bit of time offline researching it, but I certainly feel there's a definite strong libertarian bent to the founding fathers. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there was a lot of desire for liberty and freedom. And, and uh, yeah, we've talked about the Constitution. I've, I've got that mini Constitution book, actually, but we've talked about it a lot recently. I find it fascinating. I, th- I think you might be right. I, I actually think one of the problems with the U.S. right now is the federal government's got too big. Yeah, the federal government is far too big and too much power. But I would even say the state governments are too big and have too much power because the states are too large and unwieldy. They are no longer groups of people who can get together and you know, organize amongst themselves, which is what they were at the time that all of those you know, documents and things were written. At the time the U.S. Constitution were written, was written, you know, there were just a few towns in each state and the towns, everyone knew each other and they could get together and make agreements with each other. And then they could send representatives to say, hey, hey, here's what we agreed in our town. And, you know, that becomes the Congress. 